Don't come to school. You're so pale. You look like you're whitewashed. You should go home. Said my teacher as you're going to halfway through final exams. It was true. I was exhausted. I had a hemoglobin level of 6.5 and I was suffering from severe anemia and polycystic ovary disorder. I don't know why I came to school. Maybe the pressure on final exams? My BCOD was diagnosed a little differently. I didn't put on weight. Instead, I lost weight and I was exhausted all the time. From seventh grade, when I first got my period, I always bled for 15 to 20 days a month, straight. Then, I wouldn't have my period for two months. When he eventually came, I had severe bleeding and cramps. It only kept getting worse. I was good at sports in ninth and 10th grade, but I had to let go of them because I couldn't handle it. I lost my speed and stamina, and after that, I just concentrated on academics. I tried umbrella, homeopathy, energy healing, yoga, everything. I just refused to go to allopathy because I knew I'd be put on synthetic oil medications, and I absolutely hated the idea of having to pump in synthetic estrogen. But I had no choice. During my top grade pre-final exams, things had gotten out of hand so much. I had been bleeding for 25 days by then. I had to go to a gynecologist and get a scan. She diagnosed me with multiple cysts, or wheeze enlarged almost twice their size, severe anemia, and an endometrial lining thickness of 12 millimeters, even after 25 days of continuous bleeding. For reference, the thickness is only supposed to be two to three millimeters during a woman's period. The doctor said, what took you so long to get this diagnosed? I said, I just didn't want synthetic hormone medications. I've heard a lot about them and how they can cause weight fluctuations and a lot of side effects, she said. Well, now you have no choice but to be put on them. If you had delayed this any further, we would have had to perform surgery on you to take care of these enlarged ovaries. I accepted my defeat and started the medications. Then came the most horrible phase, managing the side effects. My moods fluctuated between highs and lows. Sometimes, no matter how much I ate, I was hungry all the time. Other times, my appetite was completely shut off. One bite of food would make me feel nauseous. I either slept too much or slept too little. I knew it was all because of the medicines. When my first period arrived after starting the treatment, it was extremely painful, mostly because my extremely thick endometrial lining had to be shut out in the first couple of cycles. I remember on day one of my period, I got up up. 5 a.m. in the morning, with so much pain in my abdomen and vagina. I can never forget that pain. I sat on the toilet for half an hour because my uterus was contracting. And at the end of that half hour, my uterus pushed out a, hu a huge, apple-sized blood clot. I am not exaggerating, but I think I got a tiny glimpse into what a mother goes through when she pushes out a baby at the end of her pregnancy. Because at the end of that half hour, my uterus pushed out a huge apple-sized blood clot. It was a chunk of my endometrial lining. I can never forget that night. And the thought of it still makes my stomach turn. But things got better in the next few cycles. I carried this difficult journey with me through college. Most days, I was normal, but some days used to be so difficult, especially before my period. I used to get easily irritable, had very bad mood swings, felt depressive and tired. The body pains were the worst. I would wake up feeling numb and drained out. My legs and arms refused to move, but I had to get up and start the day. That was not the worst part. Some days, I used to feel sad and cry for no reason. 
This was particularly bad during my sophomore year. Two of my roommates helped me to get better, but even they used to get confused when I cried and laughed at the same time. I used to say, I don't know why I'm crying. I just can't stop. I feel so empty and hopeless. And then go on to say, I think I'm laughing at myself because it's stupid to cry. I have no reason. I was also on my college dance team. The team was highly active. They have so many activities going on every now and then and long practice hours. It was like a full-time job, but I loved it. After sports, dancing was the next high energy activity I enjoyed doing. The learning, the practicing, the performing, all of that stuff. Those few moments on stage, I used to soak in the spotlight and let go, practicing what I've danced, practicing what I've danced for a million times. It was muscle memory. I derived a sense of thrill out of it. But this one time, I remember there was a small event in my college and I just got on my period then. My body ached everywhere in my uterus. Well, that was some assault. And I couldn't back out at this moment because it was a group performance and people were relying on me to do well and to fill my position. The formation had been set and my space was well at the front. I stood on stage. When the music started, I froze. I just froze. My arms and legs refused to move. In my head, I can see all the steps I'm supposed to be doing running like a film strip. For about a minute and a half, I just stood there, trying to catch up. But this was one of those high energy fast ones where if I missed an initial step, the entire thing was gone. I usually get an adrenaline rush on stage that forces me to be all jittery and pumped up, but this time I just felt numb and weak. After the routine, I got down the stage and I was forcing myself to keep it together. A friend came to hug me and I, I just burst into tears. That night, I couldn't sleep and that was when I decided my health comes first. I will dance when I can and do whatever I can when I can. I used to beat myself up thinking, why can't I do what everyone can? Why can't I be as active as them? Why do only I have to give up on opportunities to take care of myself? But I've made peace with the fact that I sometimes have to sacrifice a few things. Living a normal life is also an achievement on its own. I am much better now. I have less excruciating periods. It only lasts for seven days, which is normal enough. I still need to take hormone tablets, although the dosage is not as strong before. A week before my period, I still get depressed and empty. I feel there's no point to life. But now I know it's temporary and it will pass. During those difficult days and nights, I have a few people I rely on and reach out to. They make me laugh and feel better about myself. But I also tell this beautiful message to myself whenever I'm spiraling down. All of us will have our lives interrupted at some point, whether it's a clinical diagnosis, a heartbreak, or any other trauma that brings us to the floor. We need to find ways to live in, in between, managing with whatever mind and body we currently have.